What is going on guys? Today we're going to be changing the clutch in my 22 KX250. All right, we got our oil drained out of it. You could lean the bike over on the other side of the bike over there and you wouldn't have to drain the oil if you weren't ready for an oil change. For me personally, if the if I'm putting new clutch in it, I want fresh oil. Um, I broke this, I broke all these loose by hand before I put the impact on it. I'm just using the impact. So you can see what's going on here and speed it up a bit. Okay, so get all these loose and then remember your return spring for your brake is attached to here. So it's gonna be hung up so don't just rip it off, especially the springs being known for braking. So a lot of people will say if you put the Honda return spring on there, it's got like a rubber sleeve around it, will help keep you from having those brake. Um, so that's something I will be doing on mine just for preventative maintenance. I haven't had any issues of mine yet. And I really never had one brake on me before and I've had KTMs in the past as well, but I know a lot of people that have had it happen. So just for precautionary measures, I will be replacing that myself. So I'm just gonna hang this. That, that works. So on your KTM, this doesn't have five springs or six springs, whatever your the other bikes would normally have. This big plate here, this actually is the in, the spring itself. It's like a, they call it the Belleville or Bevel washer. I don't know, something like that's what they call it. And then if you look here, you got numbers. You got one, there's a two behind here and three. These are different adjustments for tensions on your clutch, which is actually a really cool thing that they do. So we're gonna take this off like that. Now, here's our pressure plate itself. We're gonna pull our pressure plate off. Okay, so pressure plate. Um, this is your, this is like a spacer deal that helps hold the, that Belleville washer into place. Don't lose this, this is important here. Okay, well actually this is, I, I believe this rod is separate. Yep, see, that's what I was talking about there. So you can actually leave this, leave the rod itself in there if you want. Just make sure you don't forget to put this back in because your clutch will not work without this. So we really don't even have to take this off. I'm just taking it off just so it's out of the way. I don't have to worry about losing it or anything. And now all we're gonna do is we're gonna be taking this clutch pack out, inspecting it and see what it looks like. I felt some slippage the other days. That's why I'm checking this out and I might be putting the new one in. So we'll see what this looks like. Okay, kind of skipped ahead here. Uh, since this is a used bike, I wanna check things out and I had that random broken piece over here in the cylinder. So I went ahead and took um, took the clutch all the way out. Uh, let's see here. So in your hub, you got this deal here and you got all these rubber bumpers. These rubber bumpers are like this. If they're split down that middle piece, then they're no good. If they're not split, obviously they're still good. So you can see mine are on the way to going bad though. Let's see, if we, there you go, focus. So we got some rubber coming off. So these, they're still usable, but they're not perfect. So I will be looking into replacing those at some point in the near future. Um, so we'll come back to that. The clutch basket and these things actually look insanely cool. That is a awesome clutch basket. I mean, come on, that thing is sweet. Well, what I noticed, the roller bearing the basket rolls on, right there, check that out. Missing a roller. That is bad, very bad actually. So I'm gonna carefully pull this out just because I don't want to lose any more if there are any more that could be loose in here. So I can't find that roller anywhere in there. So I'm gonna pull the right side case cover off, but for sake of the video, I'm gonna go ahead and put the clutch back in so that way you guys can see the how-to on reinstallation. I mean, you saw it come apart, so it's the same thing, just backwards. But I'm gonna go ahead and put it back together just so you guys can see, and then I'm gonna pull it back off because I have to pull it back off for myself. But I'm not gonna video that part because that's gonna be something completely different. So I'm gonna start getting the thing back together. When inspecting your plate, what you're looking for is either fiber missing off your fibers or discoloration in the steels and obviously you can see see this one this was the one at the top of the stack you see how silver that one still is and you see how dark these are so whoever ha had this thing before me was definitely using their clutch quite a bit you see this at the bottom you see th that uh polish so you can see this one definitely has been slipping and then you know 
that brown with the polish. And you look at this one here, this is the, again, top of the stack, looks the best, but still not spectacular. You can see this one's got some bluing along this edge here. So this stack definitely got hot, which is really crazy to me. So whoever's running this thing either was running some junky oil, not changed oil enough, and it was causing it to get hot, or he really was abusing his clutch quite a bit. Well, I'm not sure what's going on here, but brand new out of the package, and I'm looking at this. So uh, I have never in my life seen this. So I made a phone call, made a large complaint. So that is... I mean, everything but these two, these all look fine. No problems with any of this, but what is this? So, very unhappy about that. But, here's what we're going to do, just for the video. On KTMs, I don't understand why they do it. Um, I know there's some aftermarket companies that do this as well. You got a plate, a steel goes first in the very bottom here. You got to kind of wiggle this into place. There you go. Okay, so you have a steel that goes in the very bottom here, and then you see you've got these inserts, right? Well, you got these little these little bars. These bars go inside these inserts. You gotta kinda like get this to line up. Very hard to do with one hand. There we go. So you got these posts, and these posts line up in there like that, and then you rotate it, and make sure you don't drop this, and then there's a chance it could fall down, and these holes end up in your motor, and you have to take the basket off, and if you're lucky enough to get it out that way. I'm gonna do this, it takes two hands to do it, so I'm gonna do this and then show you guys from there. This is what it should look like once you have them all in place. And then you're gonna get your fibers and you're gonna drop your fibers in. Now you see, obviously, when you do this, these are cupped out, these are not. So you need these posts of the fiber to fit where it's not cupped out. You're gonna set that down and then grab your steel. When you have your steels, you got beveled side and the sharp side. I've heard opinions on putting them both directions. I always go beveled side down. So you just line this up with your posts that are sticking up. So you gotta get that pretty square on there. Hard to do with one hand. There you go. And repeat, fiber, steel, fiber, steel, all the way through the pack. All right, it should look like this when it's all done. These are all set in, my plates are all in. Now, I know that this is not on, I understand. For you guys, make sure you do have this on. You're gonna put this washer there like that. This little arm sits in there, helps it set in place. And then you're gonna tighten this nut down. Once the nut is tightened down, you see these tabs. You grab some pliers and you bend those tabs up to the walls of the nut and that helps lock the nut into place. The reason I'm not doing that is I'm about to have to pull this all back apart again to inspect the motor. So I'm not doing that. And then obviously this piece afterwards. So once you have everything in, you've got your spacer bearing wheel. I don't know what you really call that, but you need that there because it helps with your clutch actuation. If it... Okay, once you have it to this point, you want this wheel deal on here. Make sure because your clutch won't work otherwise. Um, it is very weird, like I said a second ago, that um, KTM goes steel on top and bottom of everything. That's very strange to me, but that's what they do. Oh, let's not move that. So we're gonna go ahead and put this on here. So that slips over like that. So that's all set. And then we're gonna get our plate. And remember, this has steps to it. Okay, so once you're at this point, one, it's gonna be tightest because it's got the shortest step to it. So when you put this on, the shorter the step is, it's gonna suck the spring in tighter. So I need two hands to do this, so uno momento. It should look like this when you're done. <clears throat> These don't need to be torqued down super tight. I mean, probably like 10 foot pounds maybe. I don't really know what the actual torque spec is. But when you tighten them down, you're just putting them into soft aluminum. So you don't have to crank these things down crazy hard. Just make sure that they are tight and you're good. When you tighten them, going, I always go like one, two, three, and I'll do these a little bit tighter. And then just kind of go in that triangle um, pattern. That'll keep from putting too much tension on one bolt and possibly stripping out your threads. So it keeps it even all the way around. So that's your finished product. And then put your cover on. Don't forget your brake return spring and you're done. 
All right, guys, so that's the video on how to change out your clutch and inspect your plates and all those good things. So if y'all have any other things that y'all would like to see or suggestions for me to do, leave a comment down below. Let me know. I have just pulled this right side case cover off and I did not find the that uh, roller anywhere. So that's awesome. I try to run a magnet through the hole and, you know, just everything. I can't find it. So one crazy thing. Look how tight these tolerances are on these gears in here. That is insane. Like, look at that, man. That is wild. Very tight tolerances in these motors. That's crazy. But so that means I'm gonna have to strip this motor down and rebuild this motor. So if y'all wanna see a video on how to or whatever you might wanna see on this motor, cause I'm going to strip it down. So do y'all wanna see that? Let me know, leave a comment down below, hit the like button, tell your friends, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can see whenever I do post all these videos because apparently I've got a lot of videos to post now. So let me know. I'll see you on the next ones. Peace.